you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free it is the perfect law of freedom it is the word of god the bible says in hebrews the word of god god upholds all things by the power of his command or the power of his word right will free a person from bondage of internal deception, right? And since Satan is the master of deception, uh, there are clouds, when uh, clouded issues or truths that are altered can cause Satan to gain a foothold in our mind, all right? Clouded thinking, misguided truths, or, or distortion and all that can cause the enemy to gain a foothold in our mind or in our thinking. Are you with me? Hello? And so it's so important that we allow the truth, right, to set us free. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall do what? Make you free. So God promises that his revealed truth in his word will free us up from whatever bondage there is. All right. You still with me? Okay. So imaginations and falsehood form strongholds in the mind and will. Imaginations and falsehoods or untruths, erroneous thinking, form strongholds in the mind and will. So I can become unwilling because of misinformation. Satan is the author of deception and lies. So the mind, and since the mind is the battleground on which thoughts Feelings and actions. How does this go? And then uh, Satan comes and uses those things against truth. It's so important that we know the truth about ourselves, right? He shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are made new, and all things are of God that has brought us back in the right relationship through his son. That's a fact. So, all right. Satan is against God's word, right? Okay, now I'm going to read a couple of scriptures here. For Second Corinthians chapter 10, turn there if you will. Second Corinthians chapter 10, amen. I, I just pray that uh, ministers to me like you like it did me. Verse 3 says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And these strongholds are in the mind, all right? Casting down, what? Imaginations or reasoning, proud reasoning. And every high thing that exalted itself against what? 
the knowledge of God and bring it, bringing it, or bring it into captivity every what? Every what? To the obedience of Christ. All right. So he said the weapons we have are mighty to do this, right? Okay. Now, Hebrews chapter 4. Go with me. Tells us something about the word of God. Hebrews 4 says, verse 12, for the word of God is quick or alive, that means, and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the what? Discerner of the what? Discerner of the what? Of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. You see that? Look at somebody and say, you can't fool him now. Somebody say, Lord, I just want to see this happen. God said, do you really? So, what are we saying? We don't know like we'll know when we read prayerfully God's word. Right? He shows us and he helps us because this quickening power of God's life gets in there and begin to show us where we are not thinking right. You hear what I'm saying? It is important for every believer, every true believer to get a desire to read and study God's word. If we are going to progress, right? It must not be left to chance, you see. It is our life, right? All right. Okay, so here, changes in emotion, when you think in terms of anger, if a person says, yeah, but I'm, I'm not angry really, how can a person know when there is, there is frozen anger? There's anger there, but it's just under control. How can a person know that? I asked him for three symptoms. I didn't ask him for any more. I'm sure he could have given me some more, but I, I just asked for three. So I said, Lord, what are some of the symptoms in case a person want to know? Okay, this is a message. I heard this message, but uh, I'm not sure it's for me because I'm, I'm not angry. But what are some of the symptoms of frozen anger? You ready for this? You ready for this? Somebody said, no, I ain't ready for it. <laughs> All right, let me give it to you anyway. One is... Ingratitude. Ingratitude. The second one is impatience. And the third one is fear. Ingratitude, impatience, and fear. Now, like I said, I didn't ask him for any more. So I'm sure there's some more, but I just asked him for three. That's what he, he gave me three. So I'm saying, how can a person know that they have some frozen anger there. If you find yourself being impatient, complaining, if you find yourself being fearful, if you find yourself being ungrateful, then there's a great possibility that some frozen anger is at the surface. But never fear. God is able. God is well able. His whole thing is to help us, right? God is here to help us. And uh, so changes in emotions, anger. Listen to this. Because feelings are deep and because they are close to the very heart of mankind, they appear difficult to change. They appear difficult to change. Notice I say they appear difficult to change, but they can change. The Lord can change them by our renewing the mind. 
and the, 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 the power of healing and the divine life of God follows revealed truth. So uh, the spirit follows the word, right? And the, and the Bible says, and God, uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the spirit of God was there hovering over the face of the deep or that chaos. But nothing really happened until the word spoke, right? So when the word spoke, then all of a sudden the spirit, the life came to bring about the change. So it's like that in the word. When we read God's word and then God reveals something to us, if we meditate on it, then the life comes. The, the, the life of the spirit comes and it'll bring healing. It'll bring healing. I've done this. I've seen this happen many times. I've been reading God's word and then when I read it and all of a sudden some come across there, I say, hmm, oh, that's good. Now, when I stop and say, okay, what are you saying about that, Lord? Then I ponder it, ponder it. Then the Holy Spirit comes with life. And if there's a need for healing, maybe healing of memories, whatever the healing may be, could be erroneous thinking. But when, but when, I, when, I, when they open it up, then I must embrace it, right? Y'all with me? Once he opened it up, that means God want to go there. It may be a healing that I need, maybe a healing you need, but that's how that's how God will use His Word to change us. And uh, so, uh, do this when you're studying, and uh, when God begin to just zero in on something, don't just run on and say, "Oh, that was good," and keep going. Stop. Stop. Open your heart to it. Say, God, what do you want me to see about this? Stop. Think. He's trying to reveal something. He's trying to zero in on an area of our ignorance or where we are not thinking right. And as we do allow him, then God goes further to bring about a healing. It is marvelous. It is so marvelous when it happened. And, 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 and we will be glad that we did. So we're talking changes in our emotions, right? All right, the Lord can change us by renewing our thinking. And uh, his healing power will follow the revelation of his truth. I can read something. I remember one time God uh, uh, sharing with me years ago. I was reading the word. And as I read in Numbers, it says, God is not a man that he should lie. And all of a sudden, as I was reading that, the Holy Spirit just revealed to me, God can't lie. And I began to say, oh, my gosh. God can't lie. I mean, I was floored. I was like, oh, my gosh. It's not that he won't lie. He can't lie. That thing hit me like a ton of bristles. Oh, my God. He can't lie. Look, the Bible says it's impossible for God to lie. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? So when that thing hit my spirit, I say, Jesus, thank you, Lord. That means when you tell me something, I ain't got to struggle with it because God can't lie. Come on, let's give God some praise in the house. Hallelujah. But it's as he opens it up for us, it helps us. So his revealed word helps us to change. All right, we're about to bring this to a conclusion. A person's thought life has been previously formed by natural environment, which has been influenced by Satan. How these things are formed, right? A person's thought life. What do you mean, Brother Herring? Circumstances and past experiences have played a large part in the development of patterns of feelings. Are you with me? Because of hurts and distortions of perceptions, feelings are often unreliable. All right, let me say this again. Because of hurts and twisted truths or distortions of perceptions, feelings are often re unreliable. You heard a person say, well, I don't, I don't feel too good about that. Well, what does that mean? Feelings can fool you, right? So, in other words, we don't want to put too much confidence in feelings, right? 
because feelings basically have been formed by distortions, right? And hurts and, you know, natural environments and all those things. All those things play a part in developing uh, our, um, you know, our lives and the way we think. And so because of that, feelings are mostly unreliable. Certain feelings can tell a person just the opposite of what the truth. You know, have you ever been thinking bad about somebody and then when you found, when you came to the truth, you were just totally wrong? That means it was your feelings, your twisted thinking that just made you see something that wasn't there. And so feelings are not altogether reliable. That's the point that I want to make. And then emotions originating from the flesh become focused on self and grieve the Holy Spirit. Can I say that again? Emotions originating from the flesh become focused on self and grieve the Holy Spirit. But when feelings and desires agree with the Holy Spirit, they are good, holy, and beautiful. Amen. Amen, lights. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Well, this is good because you're thinking, and that's, that's, that's always good when you're thinking. But God wants to take us from frozen anger. All right, the symptoms of frozen anger, ingratitude, impatience, and fear. The solution is the word of God, right? The solution is the word of God. The Bible says in Matthew 4, 4, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The Bible also declares in James that whoever looks into the perfect law of freedom and continue therein, being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be what? Blessed in his deeds. Joshua 1, 8 says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night. And then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Psalm 1, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Do you see how transformation comes? And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bring forth his fruit, because the seed is planted in his season, and his leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The word of God is a lamp to our feet and a light to our pathway. The Psalm 119 says, I am, I have become uh, more knowledgeable than all of my teachers. Why? Because I took heed to the word of God. The word of God is life and it is spirit. The Bible says, uh, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It is the perfect law of freedom. It is the word of God. The Bible says in Hebrews, the word of God, God upholds all things by the power of his command or the power of his word, right? It is God's word. So now he's given that to us so that we can take this word and begin to feast on it, live by it, look into it on a regular basis. And then we're going to make our way prosperous. And then we are going to have good success. Hallelujah. And he shall be like a tree planted 
by the rivers of waters. Someone says, how can I move from point A to B? Taking heed to the word of God. Some there's frozen anger and God will heal from anger, but God don't want to stop there. He want us to be re-educated right through his word. Uh, he said, I will not forget your law. Your law is a commandment. To, hallelujah. It's a light and a lamp. Hallelujah. Great peace have they that love your law. Great peace. And he said, and nothing shall offend them. Are you with me? It is the word of God uh, that we have. Hallelujah. That God wants us to get into it like never before. And then as we get into God's word, hallelujah, and we receive God's love, it's going to change our lives. Don't wait for somebody to help you change. Let's do it our own self through the help of God. Isn't that right? God has in his word divine life. He has in his word divine life. And that divine life can change every one of us. We, he knows what we need. So God knows that we need life. It's not the preacher. It's not the deacon. It's not the, it's not the mother. It's not, not the, the, the ushers. It's, it's not those things. They are not our hindrance. It is our lack of knowledge and our thinking wrong. Isn't that right? But when we think right, when we think right, it brings joy. When we receive God's wonderful love. Hallelujah. God loves you when nobody else loves you. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. And he's not partial. Hallelujah. He said, I'll be with you. I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I want you to bow your heads with me. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We honor you and magnify you. We thank you for your precious word. We magnify you because you've been so good. I thank you for opening the ears of your people that we may receive your precious word. I thank you, Lord God. I magnify you, Lord God. I thank you because you've been so good good and you, you've been so marvelous uh, and you're so excellent in all of your word and Lord God your word of prophecy came right before the word that we might open up our ears to your word Lord open up our ears to what you had to say for us today and we thank you father you are so marvelous uh, and you are so wonderful and Lord we're going to begin to give thanks and praise unto you right now we're going to serve the Lord with a glad heart hallelujah thank you Lord Hallelujah. We're going to see things from God's perspective. Lord, and we're not going to see that old glass um, as half empty, Lord God. We're not going to see what's missing in our life, but we're going to see what's provided in our life. Through God, I shall do valiantly because he it is that will trample down my enemies. God is our refuge and strength and a very present help in trouble. Hallelujah. God is with us. He said, I'll never leave you. Nor forsake you. Hallelujah. Look at somebody says, focus on Jesus. Hallelujah. Look at him. Gaze at Jesus. He's the one. He's the author and perfecter of our faith. Gaze at Jesus, somebody. Gaze at the Lord. And when you gaze at Jesus, all your problems are going to leave. Hallelujah. When I look at Jesus, then I won't look at how bad my circumstance is. When I'm looking at Jesus, I can only see somebody that's bigger than life. When I look at Jesus, Come on, let's stand and give God some praise in this house. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God, I thank you. God, I magnify you. God, I bless you because you're good. I magnify you. I praise you and I honor you because you've been good to us, Lord God. We're going to lift you up and magnify you, Lord, because there's none like you in the earth. None that can heal our soul diseases. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, God. Um, you brought us out of darkness. And you brought us into life. Somebody says, well, I don't know if I want to thank the Lord. I'll tell you one thing. You don't want to wake up in the morning or in the, during these times that we're living in. It's some perilous times we're living in. Uh, hallelujah. We got to be careful how we live now. There's so much evil in the land. Isn't that right? Um, every day that you get up breathing, hallelujah, without some machine, you ought to thank the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's a thankful time now. It's a thankful time now. Hallelujah. We want to, you know, we got to get rid of chips on our shoulders. Isn't that right? God doesn't owe us nothing. He's been good to us. He's a great God. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. 
and all that is within me bless his holy name david said i will bless the lord at all times hallelujah david found out something about god that god is good when he wasn't good isn't that right so we can bless the lord god loves us too much he loves us too much he loves us so much let's be a happy people let's be a happy people let's be a people that's in love with jesus hallelujah isn't that right let's be a people that's in love with jesus when you fall in love with jesus you can receive the blessings of God. Guess what he said? He said, delight yourself in God. Yeah. See if he won't give you the desires of your heart. Isn't that right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. I love you, Jesus. I magnify you. <clears throat> I thank you, Lord. I praise you. I praise you. Glory to God. Nothing stands in between me and success. Nothing stands between you and success but an attitude. Isn't that right? Nothing in the world standing between us and success. Hallelujah, but an attitude. So you want to have the right attitude. You got the right attitude. Ain't nothing can hold you down. Isn't that right? Glory to God. I'm communicating. I, I believe God. I believe him. And I, I hear the cry of people. I hear the cry of people. They're hurting and they're, and they're wondering about God. But God is saying, I'm here. I'm right here. I ain't going nowhere. I'm still here pleading. I see your situation, but I want you to know, let me help you, let me help you, right? Let me help you. He can help us. I am convinced that our God can help us. I am convinced that he's going to help us. I am convinced. And I want to do something here as we're, after we finish praying. Let me pray first. Father. I thank you. I just bless you. I just magnify your name. My soul give thanks to you. I found out that the devil can't stop my praise. I found out, Lord God, hallelujah, that he can't stop me from praising you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory to God. And so now, I offer you many thanks. I offer you many praise. I offer you the glory. Let's do your great name. Let your word find place in our hearts. In the name of Jesus. And we're going to honor you. And give your name the glory. I ask it in Jesus name.